Praise the Lord, everyone. We tend to use prayer as a last resort, but God wants it to be our first line of defense. Prayer is the life source between us and God. Jeremiah 29, 12 says, then you will call to me. You will come and pray to me and I will answer you. Psalms 116, verse one and two says, I love the Lord because he hears me. He listens to my prayers. He listens to me every time I call to him. What a blessing it is to know. God hears and answers our prayers. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord of Lord, King of Kings, ruler of all nations, God, we love you today. We thank you for another opportunity to come into your presence, to come together in the spirit of unity, God. We thank you, God, for another opportunity to be in the midst, God. God, we thank you for allowing us to arise today and to have use of activities of our limbs, God, to be in our right mind, God. Some of us even arose today and we have a little ache and pain, God, but we thank you for it today. We thank you and we love you, God. We pray right now that you would have your way today in this service, God. We pray right now that you would forgive us all of our sins and cleanse us of unrighteousness. Create within us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. Let our light shine so that men would only see you and you receive all glory, all honor, and all praise because you are worthy, God. Hallelujah, you're worthy. We thank you for this time of fellowship. We thank you for this time of coming together to grow and to learn more about you, God. We thank you right now for the St. Paul partners, God, that are gathered here. We thank you for every person that is tuning in, God, from around the country, God. We pray right now, God, that even as we are joined together in this virtual setting, God, that, that, you're, you're, that you would arise and that everything that you have established, God, will come forth in the name of Jesus, Lord. We just thank you right now. God, and we ask that you will bless our bishop, God. We pray that you will cover him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, God. Give him strength and power, God. Give him a, a mighty refreshing, God. God, we pray right now that you will give him wisdom like never before. In the name of Jesus, God, anoint him afresh, God, for the assignment that you have place before him in the name of Jesus, God. We pray right now in the name of Jesus for every St. Paul partner, every family that's represented, God. God, we pray right now that no weapons formed against us shall prosper, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we pray right now that your will will be done in every aspect of our lives, God. We pray that your glory will be manifested, God, even as we go out and do your will in the earth, God. We thank you right now for the strength strength. We thank you right now for the power. We thank you right now for the anointing, God, that you have placed in every individual, God, for the assignment, this refreshing assignment of today, Lord. And Father, we thank you right now for every every uh for our physical and our mental healing god god we've been in this season god and we thank you right now that the season is we see the light god and we, it's coming to an end god and we believe god that even though we've been in it god we know that you've been with us lord so father we pray right now that you will have your way in the service god every person every a servant that has come forward to do what you have established for this day to happen god we pray right now that you will bless them god in the name, give them a special blessing, God, for their servitude, God, for their for their willingness to do your will, God. Give them every person, God, that is assigned to, to do something, God, that will make this service, that will make this, that will uh, allow your word to go forth, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray right now that you will continue to bless and cover and protect and keep them, God. Now, God, we pray all the more that you would have your way. God, let someone hear 
hear you. Let someone hear your word that shall go forth, God. Let it not go forth and not accomplish everything that it is designed to accomplish, God. We pray right now that, that you will bless someone to be saved today, God. We pray right now that you will bless the backslider, the backslider to come home, to come back to you, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray right now that those who are weary, God, that you will, that they will be encouraged and strengthened by this word, God. And for all that, all that you have established for today, God, we claim victory. We claim victory. Hallelujah. We bless your name, God. We thank you, Lord, for your presence, Holy Spirit. And we say, have your way, God, in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you for being such a faithful God. We thank you for being such a loving God. We thank you for being such a God that will continue to be our Lord and Savior, God. So we just say, have your way today, God. We love you, we honor you, and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. God has a word for you. 2020 was a challenging year, but the Lord spoke a prophetic word to me to share with you for 2021. And so I want to release this word to you right now. 2020 was a year of great turmoil and trauma. Many confessing Christians had a challenging year in terms of their emotional and spiritual state. Yet here we are in 2021. Here's what I'm hearing for what will be a turnaround year. In 2021, things that you have awkwardly survived from year to year will be definitively addressed. 2021 will be a year, watch this, of recharging, launching, and favor. The power of God will be unleashed to destroy yokes and break chains, setting the people free to pursue destiny like never before. It will rest upon the people's desire to please and obey God. God declares, as the people begin to fully embrace obedience, I will open the doors that I have always desired to open, but because of inconsistency of the application of my word, I, your God, has been handicapped. God declares, I want to move your life beyond self-imposed limits, yet it rests in obedience. In years past, I have spoken the word through the man of God, but many have forgotten and forsaken it before the first month was done. The year then settled into routine, but not 2021. For those who will continue to submit, trusting what I am saying, you will see my hand in full operation. God declares, I have grown weary of watching your private life contradict my standard. So you must give yourself away to all that I am declaring. In 2021, your attitude will be key. If you choose to be negative in conversation, I will close my hand. But for those who will be guided by optimism, declaring what you are hearing, I will open up the heavens and I will release the full measure of my favor. In 2021, unlike 2020, you will move quickly only because I will do it. It will be because you created a highly disciplined life that bespeaks of a passion to obey God. 
God declares you will fight without weapons and win without stress. Yet all the victories will result because you intensify your worship and submerge yourself in my word. I am, says the Lord, destroying patterns and cycles that have become how you manage your year. I will release gushing of abundance throughout the year. Believe that after 2020, things will look easier. This will be because you decided to seek my face and not struggle with the typical issues of others around you. In 2021, God declares, I will cause everything that defines a godly life to be at your disposal. This is the year of return and payoff. So this year, do the following. One, make sowing, make the sowing principle a lifestyle. Harvest will be witnessed. Two, become a disciplined Bible reader. Three, develop a positive tongue speaking life. Four, minimize negative moments by quickly disconnecting yourself. Five, serve with extreme accountability. Six, hunger for righteousness. And finally, seven, develop godly, healthy relational tendencies. I declare that this year shall be the year of more than enough. Your turnaround is in the works, saith the Lord. Welcome everyone. My name is Cameron Underwood and we are St. Paul of Jacksonville. Now on behalf of our Bishop, John E. Guns, and First Lady, Sanjani Guns, we welcome you at St. Paul, we strive to be the most caring, covenant Christian church the community has ever seen. Now, in that sense, we do believe in Koinia, but we're all about love. We're all about people. And most importantly, that's right, we're all about Jesus. Now, once again, we welcome you. God bless you. Oh, 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 oh,
Hello, my friends, and welcome to our Sunday virtual experience. As you can tell, we are back at the Riverbank Park or the Old Landing, you know, next weekend. We're going to be here on Sunday at 12 o'clock noon. Make sure you get your ticket. I'm excited because our children just blessed us, and I'm so proud of them. Thank you, Sister Argina, and thank you, the Ark Ministry and the Fire Ministry, for reminding us to believe. Listen, I thank God for this season because in this season, we've been able to do some creative things. And so here I am wearing my colors. Yeah, I got my hat on today, uh, Virginia Tech. So I'm kind of sporting it all today. Um, I'm excited about this word because this is the third sermon in the series entitled Recharged from Ezekiel 37. And so I want us to pray and then I'm going to get right into the word. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the amazing and incredible way that you are moving us through Ezekiel 37. We thank you that it is recharging us and lighting a fresh and new fire in our lives as we seek to live in 2021 in victory. <clears throat> so in the name of Jesus, bless us now we pray, amen. Ezekiel 37, that's where we've been and really the whole chapter and it just causes me to have great excitement and joy. But I, I wanna read verses one and two, just to kind of give us some framework for the text or the lesson today. Ezekiel 37, one says, I felt the, pres the powerful presence of the Lord and his spirit took me and set me down in a valley where the ground was covered with bones. He led me all around the valley and I could see that there were very many bones and that they were very dry. Today, I wanna to partner with the, with, with the text um, with this incredible theme, simply God is in charge. I want you to hashtag God is in charge. Week one, we dealt with vision as a means of recharging us. 
Last week we talked about compliance as a means of recharging us. And today we're gonna talk about the declaration and the faith stance of God is in charge as a means of recharging us. Here's great news, God is in charge. Yes, despite all we are facing as a nation and individually, God is in charge. With the tension and turmoil running rampant in our country and in our communities, God is in charge. Watching and witnessing anger and hatred run amok, God is in charge. <clears throat> With white privilege on full display, God is in charge. While waiting on the economy to turn, God is still in charge. With this virus deeply affecting everyone in some intimate way, especially the African-American community, we can hold true to the fact that God <clears throat> is still in charge. With mental health of so many finding themselves in a dangerous place, God, yes, our God, is still in charge. With churches teetling on the brink of closure, we are still declaring that God is in charge. Yes, our God, our sovereign ruler, our Jehovah, our Elohim, our El Shaddai, our Jehovah Tiskanu, our Jehovah Jireh, our God is in charge. Our Jehovah Shalom, the God who ensures that everything we need is going to be taken care of one way or the other, God is in charge. We can rest in the fact that God, however you name him, is in charge. He is the controlling authority that operates in the domain of the world and gives us, his believers, the confidence, I said confidence, to walk out purpose knowing that God is in charge. Because we declare this, we can rest in this fact. Now let's not be naive. It does get tough sometimes to hold fast to this level of faith, for to believe in God while dealing with your personal valley of dry bones, while living nationally in a valley of dry bones is sometimes challenging, but it is also amazing. It's trusting God and not flinching when all things seem lost. It's knowing that faith is more than a warm, fuzzy feeling, but it is the bedrock of human existence and the foundation of the victorious life lived by every disciple of Jesus Christ. This in turn creates the condition for our prayer life. For when you marry faith and prayer, you create a powerful, impenetrable condition whereby though you go through pain, you will still come out victorious because in prayer and in faith, you end up declaring that God is still in charge. Mahalia Jackson once said, faith and prayer are the vitamins of the soul. Man cannot live in health without them. I want to encourage you today, my sisters and my brothers, my sons and my daughters, that whatever is needed to grow your faith, ensure that you will go after it. For when you focus on growing your faith, you will be amazed at how God shifts you from stage to stage. You will be so inspired to do as Ezekiel did. Stand where the eternal positions you and then execute what the eternal instructs you to do. You will feel excited that the holy almighty God dares to trust you, a flawed human being. But in it all, you will learn to rest in this fact. You know what I'm getting ready to say? God is in charge. Note that God being in charge bespeaks of his intimate accountability to our well-being. It involves the God of the universe who has revealed God's self most profoundly in and through Jesus Christ. This God whose love is so undeniable until he sent his best to redeem us constantly reminds us in every situation that God is in charge. So we face life with all of its undaunted challenges, assured that when God moves, meeting us in the cruelest of conditions, in the, in, in the most painful of predicaments, we will come out with the testimony that though he slay me, yet will I trust in him because our God is greater than any force and any dynamic. The psalmist declared, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not walk. And in other words, my God is the one that oversees the affairs of the human experience and walks 
walks us through it. In Ezekiel 37 then, this nation defining generationally altering vision spoken to this mature confident prophet rests not on the prophet but on God who desired to see Israel redeemed and restored. God loving them then released this vision of hope and healing, restoration and revival by employing the image of a valley filled with dry bleached scattered bones. The bones being dry bleached and scattered meant that the life that they were were assigned to provide structure and support to no longer existed. The scattered state of the bones are represented of the distortion of meaningful covenant first with God and then with their fellow Israelites. The fact that they were bleached by the sun spoke to their exposure to that which drained the very essence of life, not only from the individual, but from the nation. This itself was a stock reminder of the devastating cost of disobedience and disloyalty to the sovereign God, evident in their embrace of the worship of idols. It speaks to the nation's failure to remain focused on, the, on, on executing the standard of God and the purpose of the eternal creator. Yet despite all of this, blatant misuse of divine capacity. God shows mercy. I need you to hashtag mercy. This mercy is so amazing because it comes in simply his articulation in, in, in Ezekiel 36 and the messaging through the vision of Ezekiel 37. This excites us because it reminds us, y'all know what I'm going to say, that God is still in charge. See, 13 times in the first several verses, God uses I to refer to himself. God says that I'm not simply a God who watches you languish in failure, but I'm a God who stands strong and sturdy protecting you. So here's the question today. So as God reminded Ezekiel, what does the eternal do to remind us that he is still in charge? Well, here it is. The first thing he shows us through this vision in Ezekiel 37 to remind us that he's in charge is that he encounters us. Can I encourage you and tell you something amazing? He encounters us. What does the encountering mean? Notice in verse one and two, you hear the language of encounter. I felt the powerful presence of the Lord. His spirit took me up, set me down. He led me and then I could see. Okay, let's try it again. I felt his presence. His spirit took me, set me down, and then led me. The power of this denotes a God who, who is relational, a God who is covenant in nature, a God who does not simply leave you alone to try to figure it out by yourself, but rather a God who continues to encounter you. I do understand that we are limited in our capacity to use our natural sensory perceptions and capacity to understand God. And so the only way that we can really understand him is through faith. So God gives us what is needed to have the kind of faith that we can appropriate both intellectually and experientially the encounter. I need you to hashtag encounter because in the encounter, God reminds us that he's still God. And sometimes what's deep is that the encounter comes when others have rejected us. The encounter comes when others have walked away from us. The encounter comes when others have given up on us. The encounter comes when others don't know what to do with us. But here's what I've discovered, that even when I feel forsaken, as Jesus declared on the cross, Father, why has thou forsaken me? God will remind us that we are not by ourselves and he will show us that we are never alone. In the darkest of days, he encounters us. In the worst of seasons, he encounters us. When we feel overwhelmed, he encounters us. I need somebody to get excited and to declare, God has encountered me. I don't need you to give up. I don't need you to think that God ain't got you. Oh, he's got you because he keeps showing you 
who he is. David reminds us of this when he says to us through the Psalms, he says, when I felt overwhelmed, I asked the Lord to lead me to a rock that was higher than I. The power of God is that he encounters us. So the reason we know he's in charge and the way he recharges us is through his powerful, meaningful presence that in solitude and in crowded rooms, we are confirmed as loved by him. But here's the second thing. We know that God is in charge and he reminds us of such because he speaks to us. Verses 3, 4, 9, and 11 gives us evidence that God's voice is never muted by the authority of any situation. We can celebrate this, that no matter what the situation is, it does not have the authority and the control over God's voice. God is so amazing until God can speak to us in painful places like the garden and in isolated places like the Isle of Patmos. God can speak to us while we are in prisons like Joseph and while we feel alone in the palace like Esther. God can speak to us while we're on crosses dying and breathing our last breath. God can speak to us. Well, he speaks to Ezekiel and he says to Ezekiel, let me encourage you. He encourages Ezekiel by speaking to him. Yes, he gives him instructions, but in the instructions is the confirmation of his value. The relevance of his life is that God has not stopped talking to him. Can I encourage somebody and tell you that you can and rest assured that God's got your back. Ezekiel shows us something amazing about God. It shows us that God will get close, but notice his closeness is through his voice. And yet far too many do not understand the value of the voice of God, nor how his voice is a confirmation of the intimacy he desires to share. The infinite intellect then allows his voice to be the manifestation manifestation of his presence. But my favorite author, Henry Dowd, once said, the further I run away from the place where God dwells, the less I'm able to hear the voice of God that calls me the beloved. And the less I hear that voice, the more entangled I become in the manipulation and power games of the world. Let me motivate you that if you stay distant from God's voice, you will be easily manipulated by the emotion of this world and by the power gains of this cruel system. Uh, but if you seek God out in prayer, if you go after God in a devotional reading of his word, if you stay before the voices that are ordained to speak to you, God will blow you away. So let's be motivated then by God's loving voice. From this voice comes the promises that give life. From this voice comes life that that moves us from a stage stagnant place to fulfillment and functionality. Isaiah 48 declares the grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord, the word of our God endures forever. Psalms 1830 says, as for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take who takes refuge in him. I got good news. If you just torn in on the voice of God, you'll be okay. There's a story told about a little boy who was trapped in a fire. His daddy had run out of the house. And as he ran out of the house, he thought his son was behind him. Well, they discovered that the son had somehow gotten trapped. And so the son begins to scream out from the third floor. Daddy, help me. The father, disgusted at himself and frustrated by this moment, only has one requirement for his son. He said, jump, son. And his, and his son says, Daddy, I'm afraid to jump. I don't know if I'll make it. And he, But the father says, jump, son. Finally, the father says, son, I know you can't see me through the smoke, but 
if you just hear my voice, jump where my voice is. Can I come and tell you that though it's smoky in the world, if you can hear God's voice, jump where his voice is. His voice is telling you be encouraged. His voice is telling you no weapon formed against you. His voice is telling you that he's got a plan for you. His voice is telling you that he shall supply your needs. Jump where his voice is. But here's the last thing. Thank y'all for hanging out. We'll see y'all next week back here at 12 o'clock noon. Here's the last thing. We see the God who encounters. We see the God who speaks. But we also see the God who acts. Uh, and Andrew Murray, in his book, Lord, Teach Us to Pray, once said, do not be thinking of how little you have to bring to God, but how much he wants to give to you. The power of God is that he wants you to walk in the blessing, to walk in the strength. So he not only speaks, but he also acts. Verses 5, 6, 10, 13 and 14 shows an active God, a God that's doing something that after what is spoken has been released, he then begins to behave according to what's been declared. Can I lift the voices of those from antiquity and remind you that God is a God who will behave. He's a God that's active. Ask Moses at the Red Sea. He's an active God. Ask Joshua at the Jericho walls. He's an active God. As Dubra as they fought the Philistines. He's an active God. He's a God that does not simply watch, but he also gets engaged. I need you to hashtag an active God. He is the genius of this text is that I'm a recharge because not only does he encounter me and not only does he speak to me, but he acts on my behalf. He gets involved in my situation. He won't let me die alone and he won't let me die defeated. He will give me victory and he will show me that victory by being a partner in my pain and by participating in my situation. Ezekiel 37 has been good to me this month because it's reminded me that God gives vision, that God will reward those who comply. But it also shows me that he's in charge because he encounters and he speaks and he acts. Well, I'll see y'all when I see you. But can I give you great news today that we serve a God that is always helping us. You know, right now, I don't have my boy with me, Jay. So I can't say ride, let's ride Tonto. But I hear some birds out here and I hear the river moving and I hear the wind blowing. So can I get some amens from the wind? And can I get some hallelujah? is from the birds and can the, and can the water say God is good. See, here's the powerful thing for everybody that's watching me now is that God reminds us that everything that we've been through is because of his glory. And if we can hold on to him and not be defeated in our minds and trust that God is in charge, all things work together for good. I'm done when I tell you this. The greatest example of a God that encounters and a God that speaks and a God that acts is the son named Jesus. His son, his only begotten son, for his son came through 40 and two generations. His son gave his life for us. His son did what was needed to be done. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He gave sight to the blind. He fed the hungry. He turned lives around. His son showed us that God will encounter, that God will speak, but more importantly, God will act because on a hill far away, his son died, but he died not because he was a political convict, but he died because he was the savior of the world. And three days later, God acted again and he raised him up and gave him a name above every name that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every knee will confess. Why? Because God has been encountering and speaking and acting. And this is why I want you to be encouraged. I want you to feel recharged. 
because you are not walking through this season or any of these seasons without the presence and the power of God. You are not alone. Do you hear me? You are not alone. God is walking out this season with you. That's why you haven't lost your mind. That's why you haven't drowned. That's why you haven't quit, because God is walking out this season with you. Listen, right now, if you feel moved by the Holy Spirit for prayer, just put it in the thread right now. We're going to stop and we're going to pray for you. We're going to pray that every one of you will feel the confirmation of the Spirit today. And those of you that are unsaved or unchurched, that you will take advantage of this moment, and that you will allow the Lord to come and enter your space and sit on you in grace and glory but here's the last thing if you are unsaved and you need a church home and you just want to feel connected we're here for you so let's get ready to pray father in the name of jesus we are grateful that we are never alone that we never face anything without you that you're always here you're always fighting for us you're always standing with us and we stand confident in that and we trust you now father in Jesus' name, amen. Listen, right now, go to spnbcjacks.org and give. Uh, you can give by just simply coming by the church and putting it in the mailbox. Um, um, our deacons are going to be securing it. Don't you miss this season to give and to be obedient to God. We love you. We miss you. We'll see you soon. Remember this. We're praying that God will cover you because through Ezekiel 37, God is recharging you. He's doing it through vision. <laughs> He's doing it through compliance and he is doing it through the declaration that he is in charge. Be blessed. Pastor Gene, I love you and stay encouraged and strong. Pray that God will cover you and all will be well. Pray that God will cover you and all will be well pray that God will cover you and all will be well I pray that all will be well keep you no harm will come your way pray that God will keep you no harm will come your way pray that God will keep you no harm will come your way challenging life has been for me, but thank you that I know that when I leave your presence today, I'll be covered and I'll be protected. Father, thank you, and I'll talk to you soon.